morning and welcome to Math and Engineering Help Desk. Uh, here today we're going to be going over uh, the Chapter 7 test in the Common Core Math series for Big Ideas Math. Um, this particular uh, video is geared towards my 8th graders who are going to be taking a final exam in about a week and I want to uh, do a series of videos for them to uh, help them get ready for this final exam. So on this test, uh, we're going to go through all these problems. I will mention uh, specifically for my eighth grade class which ones may not show up on uh, the final exam or what kind of topics may not show up on the final exam, but we will go through all questions in here and uh, get to all the correct answers. So the first question here says to find s two square roots of 81. When we take the square root of, of a number, we are answering two possible answers. And remember, the square root of a number is basically what number uh, times itself would equal the number that you are asking to take the square root of. So for 81, one of the square roots of 81 is 9, because 9 times 9 is 81. In addition to 9 being an answer, so is negative 9. That is also an answer. And I just want to point out on here, uh, it looks like the negative symbol and the subtraction symbol are one and the same uh, for this calculator. So the square root, two square roots of 81 are 9 and negative 9. Also notice the calculator pops up from time to time. Okay. For exercise two, the values that represent plus or minus square root of 36 over 49. So here, when you have a fraction, you're just basically taking the square root of each part. So when you have square root of 36, you're taking the square root of 36 on the top and the square root of 49 on the bottom. So the answer here is going to be 6 over 7, because the square roots of these numbers are 6 and 7, respectively. But in addition, plus or minus. We want the positive version. We want the negative version. So we're going to check the 6 over 7 here. We're also going to check the negative 6 over 7 here. All right, for this next question, we have a cube root. So when we do a cube root of an assignment, we are ba uh, an assignment, cube root of a question or a, a number, cube root of a number is what times itself three times would equal the number that's underneath the uh, radical symbol. So here, we have negative 64. So the number that we would multiply by itself to get negative 64, that's going to be uh, negative 4 in this sense. And just to kind of prove that, if I type in negative 4 times negative 4 times negative 4, all right, and if I calculate that, that would be 64, okay, with my calculator. So unfortunately, now uh, um, with that, we have here negative 4 as our answer, okay? So we type that cube root. All right, next question, evaluating the expression. So let's talk about this one now. We have the cube root of 27. We're thinking again, what's the number that times itself would equal 27 when we multiply by itself three times? This cube root would have to be done first. And the reason it would have to be done first is because cube roots are like exponential operations. So you have to do those within the order of operations before you can do anything else. So we have to actually do the cube root first because it's considered an exponent. So in our order of operations, P-E-M-D-A-S, this has to be taken care of first. So that's going to mean this is 3. Then it's times 7. 3 times 7 is 21. And 21 plus 5 equals 26. So that question there is the answer is 26. For this question, we have the uh, Pythagorean theorem that is necessary to answer this question. So the Pythagorean theorem is a squared plus b squared equals c squared. So in this case, let's bring up my, my notepad to, uh, to show you this. OK, so remember that the Pythagorean theorem is a squared plus b squared equals c squared. a squared plus, oops, a little bit of space in there, plus b, and that's actually supposed to be, there we go, that's better, b squared equals c squared. So once we have those numbers in place, we are figure out what we're looking for. So in this question, we're actually looking for the hypotenuse. So we want to use 20 and 21 for a and b. a and b would be the legs in the right triangle, and the hypotenuse would be c. So we're going to say that 20 squared plus 21 squared equals c squared. So therefore, 400, 20 squared is 400, and 441, and that would equal c squared. That would equal what we're looking for for c. Okay? So we add those up. 841 equals c squared. And then in order to find out what this is, remember this is an equation. If we're going to reverse the squaring process, we're going to be taking the square root. So if we do the square root 
of 841. The square root of 841 is going to be, it, it, square root, type in the calculator here, square root. If I can get the calculator to work properly, there we go, 841. The square root of 841 is 29, okay? So therefore, we would say that the side length we're looking for here is 29 units, or inches in this case, long, okay? 29. All right, so, and then just to show you again one more time with that, when we're taking the square root of a number, we just finding out what number times itself in this case would be 841. So square root here and square root here, and that's how we would get that answer. Okay, now, continuing. Exercise number six, classify each real number, all subsets in which the number belongs. Okay, so there is a uh, good diagram that kind of goes through what uh, each type of number is in all of the different subsets, and if we kind of work our way out from that, we can uh, pretty much encompass all different uh, rational and irrational numbers. So if we think of it this way, as here's our rational numbers. Our rational numbers would be basically within this rectangle, which is, I'm just going to draw that in just a second once I, there it is. Uh, no, I have a shape tool. I thought I had a shape tool. I guess I don't have a shape tool. Okay. Okay, so basically think of it this way. We'll start with our rational numbers, okay? Our rational numbers are any fraction, any number that we can write as a fraction, okay? There's a subset of those called integers, where if you write them, they would come out to be positive or negative whole numbers. Then, of course, you have your whole numbers, and then you also have your natural numbers, okay? Now, the way this works is that all rational numbers are also, sorry, let me try that again. All natural numbers are also whole numbers, and they're also integers, and they're also rational numbers, okay? So think of it as if a number is considered an integer, it is also a rational number. If it, a number is a natural number, it's also a whole number, an integer, and a rational number. And again, the only difference between whole numbers and natural numbers is that whole numbers include zero, okay? whereas natural numbers do not. So, and whole numbers are all positives, okay, as well. Include zero, positive whole numbers, positive numbers, and this is positive and negatives. And then these are all numbers that are in between integers, okay, a over b, right as a over b, okay. We also have, as a separate set, we also have irrational numbers, okay? They're over here, they're not part of the, this group, any of these subsets here, but collectively, all of these numbers are real numbers, okay? All right, so with that in mind, these are our six classifications we learned in the unit. Let's go ahead and classify these numbers. Nine to the third, is 9 times 9 times 9, which is 729. That's a positive number. It is a natural number. It is an integer. It's also a whole number. It's also a rational number. Okay. Now, it's not irrational. Or irrational is going to be sort of its own uh, uh, category altogether. 7 over 4. This, is a, this would work out to be 1, one in 75 hundredths if we wrote it as a decimal. So this is only a rational number because it has a partial value in between an integer. The square root of 3, that's an irrational number. Squ irrational numbers, you can think of most irrational numbers are numbers that you cannot take a nice square root of. So if this was the square root of 4, that would not be considered an irrational number because the square root of 4 is 2. However, square root of 3, it's 1.7 and change, that's an irrational number. 0, as we talked about before, is considered a whole number. It's also considered an integer. It is also considered a rational number. It is not a natural number. Natural numbers are only positive values. Uh, that are not zero. All right. All right. Now, for square roots to the nearest tenth, square root of 70, square root of 70 is very close to uh, eight and a half. That's my, my mental estimate. If I type in on the calculator what the square root of 70 is, my calculator says 8.3666 and uh, a bunch of digits after that. If we're rounding to the nearest tenth, we need to look at the second place. So since it says 8.36, 6, of course, is closer to, the, to, to 10 than it is to 0. Therefore, we would round this up, and we would say 8.4. Okay? 8.4 would be our value, and that is approximately the square root of 70. OK, next question. What's greater, the negative square root of 4 or negative 1 to the third power? 
Well, the negative square root of 4 is negative 2. And negative 1 to the third is negative 1. Matter of fact, 1 to any power is always going to be 1, but negative powers, we would use odds for negatives, and you know, uh, even numbers would be positive. But here, negative 2, negative 1, therefore negative 1 is greater. Remember, negatives work backwards in that sense. Okay. Now, our next job here, exercise 9, is we have to determine which one of these are considered right triangles, which ones are not considered right triangles. These triangles would be considered right if they fit the Pythagorean theorem. Okay. So I'll show you what I mean. Let's say if I had 5, 12, and 14. Well, 14, if this is a right triangle, would be the hypotenuse. If I did 5 squared plus 12 squared, that'd be 25 plus 144. Well, that's 169. 14 squared is 196. If I square both of these and add them together, it should be the same as when I square this. If that's not true, which in this case it's not, it is not a right triangle. Okay. For this triangle, I do the same thing. 8 squared is 64. 15 squared is 225. 225 plus 64 is 289. 17 squared is also 289. Therefore, this is a right triangle because these numbers fit the Pythagorean theorem perfectly. This last number right here, this last triangle, excuse me, 9 squared is 81. 40 squared is 1,600. If I add those together, that's 1,681. For 41 squared, that is 1,681. Therefore, this is a right triangle. So see, if they fit the Pythagorean theorem, the digits of the, uh, sorry, the lengths of the sides, and that tells us that it is a right triangle. It's sort of a reverse conclusion of what the Pythagorean theorem is usually used for. All right, let's go to the next question here. Same kind of question. Tell whether the triangle with the given side lengths is a right triangle. So if I did 3.9, 8, and 8.9, 8.9 would be my hypotenuse. This I'd use a calculator for, of course. 3.9 squared plus 8 squared, that's going to be 64. So that together is 79.21. If I square 8.9 and get 79.21, which I do, then that would say that this is indeed a right triangle. Okay. So once again, if these numbers fit the Pythagorean theorem, this squared plus this squared, should equal that square, and that in this case they do. All right, now, the distance between these two. This is a little bit harder of a question. Uh, let's go to a new slide to kind of show you this. When we use the distance formula, we basically are using the Pythagorean theorem, but we are doing the differences in the x-coordinates and the differences in the y-coordinates to kind of get what that distance is. A simple form of the distance formula is that d squared equals the x-coordinates I'll use x2 and x1 squared plus the same deal with the y-coordinates. The difference in the y-coordinates, the difference in the x-coordinates, and then squared. Now, mathematically speaking, this information, this, th these two uh, differences here, when you square them, it doesn't matter what order you assign these. Matter of fact, even if you assign these accidentally in the wrong order, if you use, like, say, for example, the x-coordinate from one point and the y-coordinate from a second point as your x2 and y2, it actually will still work in here. So in reality, we could just say the, you know, your x-coordinates difference, your y-coordinates difference, verbal models all would be the same thing. So um, for accuracy purposes, of course, we'll plug them in uh, as they're written here. OK, so anyway. What are we going to do here? Well, we have the x-coordinates of the two points, negative 2 and 4. So if I did negative 2 minus 4, that would be negative 6. If my y-coordinates, my y-coordinates here are 5 and 3, if I do 5 minus 3 and then square those, of course I would want to square those. I would want to square that as well. That's going to be negative 6 squared. And I want to put that in parentheses as well, because negative 6 squared is going to be positive. Plus, oops, sorry, plus 2 squared. OK? And that's going to be 40. Now, when I square root this, let me make sure I'm doing that right here, just to make sure. Yep, OK. And when I square root this, I'm obviously going to get a distance, and I'm going to round that to the nearest tenth. And it should be this kind of question you want to use pretty much 
uh, as a dist as as a round to the nearest tenth as well. So if I do square root of forty, square whoops, type that in wrong. Square root of forty, that's going to be six point three units. All right. So I'll type that. Okay. All right. And then once again, where did I get that from? That's because I'm doing this is d squared, and that equals forty. So I want to square root that to get what it does equal. OK, so 6.3. All right, now, for our purposes in this unit, we did not talk too much about these types of questions, diagonals and Pythagorean theorem, some Pythagorean applications. So we're going to skip a few things here. And we're going to go right to this question right here, this exercise 19 question, OK? So in this question, the surveyor holds a laser rangefinder three feet above the ground and determines the rangefinder is 92 feet from the building and 106 feet from the top of the building. What is the height of the building? Round your answer to the nearest tenth. Okay. Now, a couple things going on with this question. It's an easy question to make a mistake on. So for here, we're going to use the Pythagorean theorem and get, an inf get some information, but also recognize that since he's standing three feet or has a rangefinder three feet above the ground, we actually have to add three to our final answer. Uh, as well. Okay, so let's let's work this problem out. 92 squared, and then we're going to use the Pythagorean theorem, plus h squared, we use h for height, would equal 106 squared. So in this case, we're looking for a leg. And because we're looking for a leg, we're actually going to move this 92 squared to the other side. And we'll say h squared equals 106 squared minus 92 squared. Okay. So we'll do the math in that right now. 106 squared is 11,236. And that's going to be subtracted by 92 squared, which is 8,464. So we'll subtract those two numbers. And again, I'm just using a handheld calculator here. That's going to be 2,772. And then to find out what h squared is, I'm going to square root this uh, this value. So h squared equals that. So the square root of that will equal, let's see, square root of 2,772. And we're going to round this to the nearest tenth, 52.6. OK, yep, 52.6. So that's the h we get. Now, once again, remember, this height is actually from here to here. So we have to add in the fact that the rangefinder is three feet above the ground, because the building obviously is not above the ground. It's on the ground. So that means the total height of this building is actually 55.6. Okay. All right. So that'll do it uh, for this particular video. And uh, again, there's other questions on here that are applications of the Pythagorean theorem. Um, some of them are easier than others. And your teacher may have done some of these questions. And if you have questions about it or you're curious about the answers, uh, you're welcome to uh, post your comments here in the video. Anyway, I hope you have a wonderful day. And don't forget to be awesome.